This video discusses how to use the JTEC Lasers tool for Inkscape, a popular and free drawing program. All right, first thing we're going to do is download the extension file here. Um, we've gone to Software Inkscape Laser Plugin on the JTEC page. So we're going to click this button here. You can alternatively get it on the GitHub site, but we just have it conveniently here. Um, this is the newest version as of 7.10.2025. Um, so it's going to be now in our downloads. Um, we can see it. Um, here's the JTEC laser tool install. I'm just going to extract it right here. Um, just make it easy. I'm going to extract. And you're going to see that it's going to pop it up. And you're going to see that there's a folder called laser. And in laser, there's going to be three files you really need. There's laser INX, laser PY, and SVG to G code. Um, we're going to show where to put those uh, next. Okay, so we went ahead and opened up our Inkscape. We downloaded uh, version 1.4.2. Um, just download the newest version that you have. Uh, this is video is, is specifically for uh, 1.4.2. And we're going to go up to edit. And we're going to click down to preferences. And we're going to find out. Um, in system here, uh, click on system and you can see under user extensions, this is our folder that is for extensions on our computer. It's going to be different for every computer, so we're going to click on this open extensions folder. Um, that will pop up the extensions folder and you can see that it is empty right here. So I'm going to take over those files. I'm going to just grab all four of them in that uh, the, um, the zip file we just opened and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to then paste them into this extensions folder. Um, and it's going to be different for everybody. It's going to be something about data and it's Inkscape and under extensions. Um, and then we're going to close this and uh, we can close this. Oh okay, yeah, we just restarted Inkscape here and um, you can go up to the extensions and you can see here that we have the Generate Laser G Code is now um, showing up and it says JTEC Laser Tool. Um, let's click on this and we're going to go through some of this. Um, there's going to be multiple tabs. There's going to be imports, important settings, advanced settings, custom header, footer, coordinate system, and transformations. Um, let's go over the important settings first. Um, first thing we're going to probably have to do is determine our units. Um, Inkscape is in general in millimeters, it's metric. Um, so I'm going to leave it in metric for this tool. Um, you do have the option to do inches, but some of the calculations might not be as smooth. Um, so I'm just going to keep everything in millimeters. Travel speed is going to be the speed at which your laser is moving when it's off. So this is what's normally called a rapid move. So I'm going to put mine at like 4,000 millimeters per minute, which is about 157 inches per minute. That's a good rapid move um, speed. Um, and this all depends on your machine too. The cutting speed is going to be cutting and engraving speed for when your laser is on. Um, so 500 is like for cutting because that's going to be around like 20 inches per minute. Um, if I was engraving and it depends on the laser, like if I had a 64 watt or a 24, then I'd probably put it almost like 4,000 4, or even higher. Um, uh, if it was engraving, then we do 4,000 as well. So why don't we just say engraving with a higher power JTEC laser. Um, if you were cutting and I was at um, 500 um, and you wanted to do multiple passes and it didn't get through in one pass, then you can increase your passes and it will do multiple passes around. If you put a pass depth here, it will move this um, depth every time the z-axis down. So if you need to cut through something in four passes and you wanted to move it like um, a millimeter down, then that's what you would do. And so it would be, um, you know, a millimeter on every four, four passes, like, and they would go down. So I'm going to just leave this as one pass and put this at um, zero, back to zero. Um, output directory is important. You can browse for where you want it. I just put one in a, a G code, uh, to my G code catch all. So I just browse for that. And I put output.g code as my output name. You can do any name you want here, but um, just need to put something. I add the numeric suffix, the file name, so every time I press apply, it just does output one, output two, output three, um, just in case you want to um, just make it easy. Okay, now we're going to go to advanced settings. So the tool power command um, for CNC machines is going to be something like M3S1000. 
Um, the M3 will turn the laser on and then the S1000 is the power. Um, for a uh, 3D printer, it might be something like M106 that turns it on. Um, if you're doing, uh, uh, it might also be an M4 command. Um, if you're doing different powers and you want it, this is full power, but if you want to do power control and your laser has power control and your CNC machine has power control, your S value can go down to like um, 200 is 20% or 500 is 50%. We're gonna leave it at 1000 because uh, we're gonna cut through. Um, your tool off command for CNC machines are typically M5. Um, it could also be something like S0 if you wanted. Um, or an M1 serial 7 if you're on a 3D printer. I'm just going to leave mine an M5. A dwell time before moving in milliseconds. This is in case you're cutting something that's hard to get started cutting. So this dwell time is going to be basically turning the laser on and then um, allowing it to sit there for how many, many milliseconds you put in before it starts moving to do a pre-cut. Um, I always like to draw the debug. It's like basically afterwards it's a picture of what it is where the motion is just so you can see where the motion is going to go. Um, just leave these default. Uh, these are probably going to be fine and also leave the approximation tolerance. Um, these are kind of advanced things here. Okay, so let's go to the next thing, custom header and footer. If you wanted to have a text file somewhere that had things uh, specific for your footer or your header, um, things that you want to do to have it ready to go before you start a file, um, there's sometimes you want to put things in there specific um, for your machine and same at the end if you want to do specific things at the end of your file. You can put them here, just browse for a text file and it will append those. Um, if you want to set a specific z-axis position, it will do an absolute um, position based off your units. Um, I usually just leave this unchecked and have my z-axis ready um, to go before I run my program. So I will focus it and put it at its level that it needs to go and then it doesn't have any z-axis moves unless you have um, in this other one, if you have the, the, um, the uh, passes and, your, uh, and your, your depth here. But normally I just don't leave, I just I leave the z-axis off. Um, I like to leave the move to origin. When done, it puts your laser back to zero, zero. And then this will turn on your laser before and after the job. It's like a good safety thing just to turn on and off um, before and after. Okay, so now we're on to coordinate system and transformations. This one's a pretty big one. Um, this machine origin, uh, you can have it be at your bottom left um, or uh, top left or center. Um, it doesn't really matter too much um, uh, in terms of what you choose. It's whatever you really like. I'm just going to do bottom left here. Um, and then I'm going to um, take invert Y axis. I don't, it's if your machine and you notice that it's going the wrong direction, I would press this, but in, typically it's not going to be going the wrong direction. The big now thing is your width of your bed. So if you're in millimeters, I'm going to say mine is 800 millimeters by 800 millimeters. I think that's around um, 30 inches by um, uh, 30 inches or so. Um, uh, around 31 or so. Um, and so that's the size of your bed. We're going to change the size of your bed to make, match the size of the document um, in a minute. Um, but that's an important one you can change. To, that's basically your, your, this is your area where you have to, to be able to put your, um, your artwork and other stuff in. Uh, offsets, you don't really need to use these either. These are in case you need to move um, your G-code away from where you drew it. Um, and it's going to reference these this distance um, from the top left corner of your page. Um, and scaling is, is basically scaling. And the one last thing is the live preview. I usually leave this off because it usually bogs it down because every time you make a change to here, it's going to try to draw it in here. You're going to have to see the, the drawing at the end when you press apply after we do our example here in just a minute. All right, so now we've closed that down and we are looking at our blank sheet here. It is uh, an A4 sheet, definitely smaller than the workspace. So I'm gonna right click it and say document properties. And it is only 200 by 297. We're in millimeters right here. You can change it to something else here if you want, but I'm gonna keep mine in millimeters. And I'm gonna change this to 800 by 800, which is our size of our machine bed. And you can see that it um, changed it to a square and we have the square here and we can get ready to um, do a, uh, a project. All right, so you can see that it's definitely bigger. So I'm gonna go in here and um, zoom. Um, I'm gonna zoom out to the page um, just so we can kind of see the entire workspace here. Um, so this is our table and I put the bottom left as our origin. 
So I'm going to go and take a, a tool here, uh, just a text tool, and I'm going to say test, and kind of do it on the, my bottom left corner. If you want it to be, it's going to go take, it's basically going to move everything from the bottom corner and then start doing the test. Um, if you want it to be exactly in the corner, then I would do something like this so that you can line it up perfectly. Right now, I'm just going to kind of put it over here. So now they just done some text, what we need to do is take this object, uh, things in Inkscape are objects. Every time you do an object on your paper, it is an object. You need to now make that into a path. So I'm going to say object to path here, and that gets it ready for the extension for the laser engraver extension, the JTEC laser tool. So I'm going to go to the JTEC laser tool. We've already filled out all of our stuff, so we again have it on the bottom left. Um, I'm going to sit here and press apply. So it's going to think about it and come back pretty quickly. We can close this out, and now we can see that um, that the uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom. I'm going to zoom in um, a little bit, and you can see zero zeros at the corner, um, 800s over in this corner. Uh, the test is here, and it's going to be a certain distance from over there. And you can see the top corner is 800 and 800, 800. So it's going to generate a G code file based on cutting out this test. So let's go look at that G code file. So we're going to go into our folder that has our G-code. I've run a few of these tests already, so I can see it here as output 18. Uh, now let's go look at it on the NC Viewer. So I'm going to go open a new tab and go to ncviewer.com. And this is a cool little program that we can use to watch and look at our code. So I'm going to grab our code. It's output 18. I'm going to throw it over here. And sure enough, there it is. Um, this little grid is not as big as ours, but you can see it's going to go over here first. It's going to start at the uh, the T. I think it's going to go over here, do the T, then the S, and then the E and the T. Um, and you can watch it. You can even play it as it goes through. So you can see it do the T. Actually, it does the S second or third, and then it does the T. It goes all the way through and then moves over to the T and finishes at the origin. So we know that it did that correctly and we are ready to run our test. Um, so that's a basic overview of Inkscape and how to use the JTEC um, laser tool in Inkscape. And I hope that uh, you um, have fun with it and uh, support uh, JTEC and JTEC products. Special thanks to our contributors on the JTEC Photonics Laser Tool, the community project. Um, you can see all of the people who have helped out, um, including Padlex has done the most. Um, but all these people who helped out, I congratulate all of them and I, uh, I'm thankful for them and the community in general. If you want to take a, a part of it and be part of the community, you certainly can go to um, the GitHub page here and, um, and, and feel free to um, uh, give as much as you can in terms of uh, your time to help out to make this better. Thank you.